Welcome everyone to today's webinar, Three Ways Hospitals Are Driving Innovation in the Patient Room. I am McKenna Shire with Becker's Hospital Review. We will begin today's webinar with a presentation and we'll have time at the end of the hour for a question and answer session. You can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar by typing them into the Q&A box you see on your screen. We look forward to hearing your questions. Today's session will be recorded and will be available after the event. You can use the same link you used to log into today's webinar to access the recording. At this time, I'm now pleased to start today's webinar by introducing our presenters. Ken Hanika is the Senior Healthcare Business Development Manager at Samsung. Prior to Samsung, Ken has over 25 years in the healthcare industry with positions at Cerner, McKesson, IBM, and UPMC. Uh, Irene Yu is the Executive Briefing Center Manager for the Display Division at Samsung. Prior to Samsung, Irene spent over five years in the healthcare industry working for hospital systems, including Dignity Health. At this time, I am pleased to turn the floor over to Ken to begin today's presentation. Thank you, McKenna, and thank you all for taking time out of your schedules to join us during this session. Um, I'm Ken Honeycutt, and I lead Samsung's healthcare dis uh, display business. The agenda today will be a little bit about Samsung and healthcare, the products and services we offer. Offer. There'll be a demonstration of one of our offerings we provide along with information about additional solutions. And then I'll uh, land my plane with a few closing remarks. Many of you know the Samsung name from the consumer world. And in fact, eight out of 10 of you on the call own a Samsung product. What you may not know is that Samsung is deeply embedded in the healthcare industry. And we serve each of these markets, whether it be hospitals, senior living, everywhere from independent living, assisted living, uh, skilled nursing and hospice, rehabilitation facilities, and dialysis and infusion centers. Samsung has a robust portfolio of products and solutions for healthcare, everything from the smallest screen like that of mobile phones and tablets to the largest outdoor signage. And today we'll spend our time talking about the solutions in the middle, uh, the in-room patient TVs and the digital signage solutions that would be applicable to your facility. We've identified at least 10 locations in modern healthcare facilities where digital signage can be utilized. Anything from entrances and lobbies to donor recognition walls and wayfinding and navigation. So during my 30 year career, I've spent a majority of my time assessing innovation and emerging technologies with some of our leading health providers in the country to improve patient experience and clinical outcomes. And this has been through primarily a conversation about the how of various products and services that were designed to improve the patient experience and engage patients in a more meaningful way. But during the past few years, and with this gray hair has some, come some wisdom and perspective, leading me to instead focus on the why. It's not just about the technology and how it works, but the motivation to have that technology positively impact the patient experience, along with clinical and business drivers. In this case, displays are the technology but why do they make a difference to those problems we're work, working to solve? The quote uh, from one of my favorite TV shows from a few years ago, it was called Halt and Catch Fire. They're the thing that gets you to the thing. The technology is what allows you to solve for both clinical and business drivers. So what trends are we seeing in health, uh, healthcare technology today? We see a need to, uh, to give patients the freedom and autonomy to be uh, involved in their care and have more control of their environment so that they can focus on getting better. The influence of consumer experience in today's healthcare environment, uh, whether that's from the consumer world or in, from hospitality. Uh, greater workforce optimization and collaboration with the ease of technology to increase efficiency. And lastly, technology that can prevent medical communication errors and distribute timely information. So I want you to just take a moment and think about the person you love and feel most protective of. Maybe it's your wife or husband, maybe it's your child, or maybe it's a parent or grandparent. And I want you to imagine that right now, at this moment, you receive a text that that person's being admitted to the hospital unexpectedly. Putting your own emotions aside for a moment, I'll ask that you put yourself in your loved one's shoes. They're likely scared and overwhelmed, certainly not feeling their best and completely out of their element. They're in an unfamiliar hospital room where everything, well, almost everything is foreign to them. And I'll explain more on the almost everything portion in a moment. 
They've lost complete control of their environment from the various people around them to when and how they do the most basic daily tasks. They're both isolated and incredibly vulnerable. And to make things worse, they suddenly have a lot of time on their hands. And yet there's one thing in the patient room that is familiar that everyone recognizes and knows how to use. It's the television. And now you may look at this and go, and go, okay, it's just the TV. But I think of it as the most common and familiar object in the patient room, therefore making it one of the most powerful tools in the room. Why? It's because it's a patient facing portal. Because through the use of this TV and paired with video conferencing technology, it can connect a new mother with her husband overseas so that he can take part in the birth of their first child. Because it can connect that patient with someone who speaks their language so they can understand their care and what's happening to them because it allows them to choose a meal, that right meal late in the evening after a long period of fasting or after surgery, or because it merely makes it possible to easily turn on a reading light, or raise a window shade or turn up the temperature when it's cold without waiting for someone to do it for them. It also gives your loved one a voice to let someone know when something just isn't right much more than just a TV, when paired with other systems, it's an incredible resource that helps people get connected. And when we feel connected, we feel in control. And when we are in control, we are happier and we get better faster. And of course, solutions like these aren't just for the patient. Let me explain. I imagine many of us on this call have children. I bet almost every parent is guilty of using the digital babysitter from time to time. How often have we sent our kids to play on their PlayStation or Xbox or watch Netflix? I know I certainly have. And to make me feel better about this parenting technique, I like to call it positive distraction. When your child is playing on the gaming system or watching a movie, you know the requests they're gonna be making of you are gonna be reduced or even eliminated altogether. This positive distraction allows you to catch your breath, get a few tasks complete that's been on your list for way too long, or make a phone call to someone that's long overdue to reaching out to. So when it comes to positive distraction, we as adults are wired the exact same way. So imagine positively distracted patients on an exponential scale in your facility requiring fewer resources from your staff, resulting in fewer nurse call button depresses, I would argue fewer medications dispensed, an engaged or positively distracted patient is a happier, healthier patient. And happier, healthier patients ironically also means half your nursing staff. And this is why it's not just about the patient. We are now seeing that in-room patient displays are being expanded to include over-the-top apps like Netflix, Hulu, and YouTube. In addition, we're seeing where patients bring their own device to be able to cast their own entertainment selections to the in-room patient TV. For all the reasons I've mentioned so far, the initial selection of your in-room display is vitally important to the ability to leverage that equipment to enable other technologies because you see the TV, it's the hub, it's that patient facing portal, and it's the thing that gets you to the thing. So what do we envision for the future? First, we see larger displays in the patient room. As we see, we take cues from the consumer world, TVs are getting larger in our living rooms. We see that translated into the hospitality environment where displays are getting larger and larger. The same is true in healthcare. We envision displays as large as 75 or even 85 inches in the patient environment. These larger displays will be utilized for purposes beyond pure entertainment. They will include electronic patient whiteboards as an uh, integrated solution or as a standalone solution. Studies have shown that 80% of nurses, house staff, and attending physicians agree that patient whiteboards and out of patient room signs play a role in improving patient care, teamwork, and communication. The picture you see here is a small form factor display that can be used when integrated with legacy systems like that of the EMR and the shift assignment module to illustrate current and real-time information about the patient's care team. Further, it's a patient safety and quality measure to prevent adverse events. For example, allergies that the patient maybe ha uh, have can be displayed here. So in this example, this patient has a latex allergy. And of course, we don't want to have a respiratory tech or a lab tech entering the patient room with latex gloves. It can also be a method of communicating native language, whether the patient is hard of hearing or visually impaired, or if they present as a fall risk. Further, we'll see the expansion of touchscreen capabilities 
and the ability to annotate on these displays. We see use cases for casting to the display for multiple purposes. Studies suggest that patients who are well-informed, educated about their condition, and involved in their healthcare decisions not only have a greater satisfaction of care, but also tend to have better outcomes and lower cost. Now, Irene Yu from the Executive Briefing Center in Irvine, California, will now show how clinicians can use their tablet or mobile device to cast images like that of PACS or radiology images to the in-room display to be able to illustrate and collaborate with patients and their caregivers and even annotate. Uh, thank you, Ken. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to join this webinar. My name is Irene Yu, and I manage Samson's California Executive Briefing Center. What is an Executive Briefing Center? You can think of it as Samson's showroom for all things commercial display. Um, I really have the luxury to be surrounded by really cool gadgets all the time. Dynamic LEDs, 8K displays, micro LED displays, including the flip. Sure, the flip may seem like a typical interactive whiteboard, but it's so much more than that. Um, being able to really play around with this display on a constant basis, it really allowed me to understand the value that it can bring to any business setting or industry, including healthcare. Um, coming, from healthcare coming from the healthcare industry myself, I started to realize how beneficial the FLIP is in the patient experience for both the patient and the physician. The FLIP really allows partnership between physician and patients to happen seamlessly, whether it be the physician using the FLIP to review medical information or using the FLIP to educate a patient on a certain procedure. The FLIP really is a powerful tool. Once in our lifetime, I think we've all either gone to the hospital or emergency room and gotten our x-rays taken. But how many of those times did you walk out of the exam room confident and knowing what you were looking at? A couple of years ago, I had a really sharp pain on my left side and it was extremely painful to breathe. Not having experienced such symptoms before, I decided to go to the ER and got my lungs x-rayed. After the, the procedure, the radiologist came to my bedside and let me know that I had some inflammation around my lungs. Great. I had inflammation in around my lungs and that sounds really scary, but the radiologist didn't even do anything to ease my worries at all. He didn't even show me my x-rays, not that I would even know what I was looking at, but still. He just merely let me know my lungs were inflamed, prescribed me some antibiotics, and sent me on my merry way. So after I started working at Samsung, I started to realize how technology can really enhance the patient experience. Had the radiologist show me an x-ray, explain to me what a normal lung should look like versus how my lungs look like at that current moment, I can positively say that I would have walked out of that examination room confident that I wasn't going to die. The flip could have really made my experience at that hospital a lot better, and, would, and it also would have made me feel a lot more confident in that healthcare facility. So let me show you in this demo exactly how my experience at that facility could have been a lot better. As of now, we see that the flip is just blank screen, but I am going to go ahead and smart view connect to the flip using my Galaxy phone. And that should just go ahead and take a simple minute. And as you can see, I am currently smart viewed wirelessly connected to the flip right now. So for example, I can, as the physician, I can go ahead and bring up a picture of a normal x-ray of a normal lung and take a screenshot of that there. And I can go ahead and just bring that over to the corner and just dictate, hey, this is what a normal lung should look like. And after that, I can just go ahead into the PACS, let's just say, and bring up the picture of the patient's lung, take a screenshot of that, and just leave it side by side next to the normal, uh, normal x-ray lung. And then also, just for the patient's benefit, I can also bring a, up a Google search of what pleurisy really is. And this helps the patient understand in layman terms, just, you know, just giving them a visual of what it's supposed to look like. So as you can see, just going to make this really small. And with these three screens, I can go ahead and show the patient what exactly is happening with their lung. So this would be the normal x-ray, normal view of a healthy lung, and this is would be the patient lung. And as you can see right here, it's the pleurisy is basically the inflammation of the lining of the lungs. And we can go ahead and show the patient right here that there is a lot of congestion in his x-ray compared to the normal view of a normal lung right over here. He has a lot of congestion over here. It has a lot of black space in the normal lung and then in the you know congested lung, it doesn't have so much um, black space. And that can really just make the patient feel a lot more confident with what is going on internally in their body. Although really the only thing that they can do is just take antibiotics, just, but just showing the patient really what is going on internally can give them the confidence in not only the physician, but the healthcare facility itself.
Another trend we see is the ability to intelligently route non-clinical patient requests to the appropriate support service lines to offload some of the burden on an already overtaxed nursing staff where they must play switchboard operator. Requests to have the room clean could go directly to environmental services. The dietary tray that needs to be picked up could go directly to the dietary department or temperature change requests could be sent directly to facilities management to respond. We can also utilize the in-room patient display to measure patient satisfaction and sentiment via brief survey questions. An example could be, we ask the simple question on the display, is it quiet enough for you to sleep? With a simple yes or no answer through the nurse call pillow speaker. We can then send that response to the appropriate person or persons in your facility to respond to this information, creating a, a service recovery model. During these challenging times with our global health crisis, the need for patient and family communication through video has emerged. But even beyond this period in time, we anticipate the use of video conferencing to continue to address multiple needs, telehealth and virtual rounds for telenursing so the nurse may be able to get a visual assessment of the patient prior to gowning up and using precious PPE resources. In uh, mother baby units where moms delivered and grandparents may be far away or for end of life conversations. We also see vi video being utilized for language translation services, especially that of sign language. Additionally, it could be used for virtual bed rails to prevent falls. Providing clear and concise information to patients and guests is important, whether it be through wayfinding and dis navigation displays to help patients and guests get where they need to go with ease, or in waiting areas where displays can tell you uh, when you'll be called back for an exam or procedure, or to get an update on a loved one in surgery or where they are in the surgical process. They also can convey information about your facility to differentiate your brand with information unique to your health facility, whether it be a doctor profile, patient stories or testimonials, facility amenities, or innovative medical approaches. Even after all of these solutions I've just discussed, using the simple display, it doesn't stop there. And here comes the alphabet soup. By connecting TVs and other technologies like your EMR, your HVAC, your RTLS, you put information, education, access, and yes, distraction in the palm of your patient's hands. We at Samsung know that all of you strive every day to provide patients with a comfortable and nurturing environment to heal, especially during these challenging times. And we have a genuine desire to support the incredible men and women who are faced each day with the daunting task of critical thinking and compassionate care. The solutions I've shared here today help support both of those goals. As we wrap up here, I encourage you to take this idea back to your organization when thinking about technology purchases, not just to ask how, but more importantly, why? Or a phrase of another way, how can we leverage displays to drive patient satisfaction, improve patient safety and quality, and support and optimize nursing staff? After all, they're the thing that gets you to the thing. Thank you. Thank you, Ken and Irene, for that fantastic presentation. We will now begin today's question and answer session. Please submit any questions you have by typing them into the Q&A box that you see on your dashboard. We will try to get through as many questions as we have time for. So the first question I wanted to go over is, why is the patient experience so important, and especially right now? Yeah, so obviously with the current global health crisis and the strains on health systems in the US, being able to optimize workflow by routing non-clinical support service requests to service aligns is really important. It really decreases um, the response times and obviously drives to patient satisfaction. Additionally, patients, especially those who have been quarantined due to COVID and the need to maintain patient and family communication is more important than ever. Thank you so much for that insight, Ken. The next question uh, one of the audience members asked is, uh, what are the biggest challenges you've seen when you are trying to integrate the display solutions into hospitals? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I'd say it's interoperability. Coming into a health system that already has some legacy systems in place and trying to fit within their ecosystem. So we at Samsung have taken a really proactive approach or measures to address these issues with various vendors in the marketplace that we find in most health systems to come to the market with answers rather than questions. So we're able to address that interoperability piece more proactively now. 
That's very interesting. And thanks so much for uh, sharing that, Ken. And, you know, when I'm looking at the next uh, question that I'm seeing is, an audience member wanted to know, are there any Samsung healthcare solutions that um, their hospital system could install today? And um, if not, um, what is the average lead time? Yeah, so everything that's been discussed today is now available at this point in time. So we're happy to discuss further with any health system that may have an interest. Thank you so much, Ken. That's super helpful for us to know. And, you know, I believe we have time for one more question. And um, one audience member did want to ask before we wrap up, um, what will be what will Samsung be doing in the patient room in the future? Well, that's a good question too. So, you know, I think that as I've been in this industry for a while, and it came to me very late in my career. You know, we take a lot of cues from the consumer market, what's taking place in people's living rooms, obviously from the hospitality market, what's taking place in hotels and motels. And what I'm seeing in the hospitality market and obviously in the consumer world is that we see an emergence of voice, whether it be voice controls in the uh, hospitality area or in your, in your home, whether it be an Alexa or other. Uh, we expect to see that bleeding into the healthcare uh, environment, but in a HIPAA compliant way. Thank you so much for that response. Um, and, you know, that's a great question to wrap up on. And that is all the time we have for today. I want to thank Ken and Irene for their excellent presentation and Samsung for sponsoring today's webinar. Enjoy the rest of your day and stay safe.